Question for you, can we take this rather dull and lifeless photo, edit it in Luminar AI and create something more impactful like this? Well, I'd hope so, otherwise it's gonna be a bit of a rubbish video. <laughs> Let's see how we do it. Hi guys, Anthony Turnham here and welcome to another Luminar AI photo editing tutorial. In this one I'm going to be editing this rather flat looking photograph here while paying homage to what I saw and felt when I was actually there on site. And what drew me to this scene initially was this layering effect of the three hills and then these lone trees sat silhouetted against this rather bright sky. And part of the appeal when I actually took this photograph was the solitude of these trees here sat high up on the hill. Yet due to the lens I had with me at the time, I couldn't actually shoot any tighter. And so I feel like there's a few distracting elements within this frame that I just don't want there. And so this is gonna be a really good opportunity for us to visit the clone tool and look at what that can actually do for us to help enhance our photos. And talking of enhancements, let's grab Luminar AI's Accent AI filter and just grab this tool and move the slider to the right to the left and we can actually see what Luminar AI is actually suggesting for this particular photo. And this is such a cool tool because if you are new to photo editing and you're not confident of jumping into a more refined tool such as the light tool and playing around with all of these sliders inside of here, the fact that you can do so much within Enhance AI is just such a useful feature for people just starting out with photo editing. And then as your confidence with photo editing grows, you can start to rely more on your own eye and your own judgment in this kind of category and less on the AI built into Luminar. But I often like to just put some of this Accent AI in just because I feel like it's a helping hand that just gets you moving in the right direction more quickly. You guys know that I'll often apply a camera matching profile, but at the same time, I don't want you guys to panic if you don't have that available to you and you just have the Luminar default. It's fine, it's a good profile and it can work pretty well. So let's see what I can do in this. I might just shift the temperature slightly. And my main goal with this initial edit is just to start to increase the contrast, make sure we have a good dynamic range and set even more contrast by boosting our whites up and bringing our blacks down. In the past, you've seen me try and set a perfect black and a perfect white point, but I'm not gonna worry in this particular edit. And that's because sometimes as we add some of Luminar's other tools, such as Structure AI that is designed to add more contrast into your photo, that can push the black point that you've set here even further and you can start to lose detail in your shadow. So I'm just gonna leave this a little bit away from the far edges of our histogram here. So you can see on the right hand side here, we've still got room to move the whites up and also room to drop the blacks down. Down. Curves is a tool that I absolutely love. It's very powerful, but if you guys aren't familiar with it, don't worry too much. I'm gonna give you a really basic concept here. If you put two points on your curve like this, one on the right, one on the left, you bring the one on the right up, that represents the highlights. So you brighten the highlights by bringing this up and you darken the shadows by bringing this down. And that way you can actually come in and finesse your contrast so you can get it exactly at the point you want it to be at. So in this first pass with these first two tools, which is the light tool here and the enhance AI, we've been working on a global scale. So if we look at our before and our after, you can see that we've had a big impact on the whole photo. Most of the tools I'm gonna to use from now on, however, will be more dedicated to local areas of the photo. So specifically the trees, let's say, or this ridge of the hill here where I might want to enhance the highlight section where the sun is just catching the ridge of the hill here. And the way I like to do that is by first coming into a tool. So for example, Structure AI, which as we know, as I push this to the right, that's just gonna enhance a whole load of contrast through the whole image. And if I toggle this off, and on, you can see just how much detail that's brought in. And now with the tool set to its maximum without increasing the boost section here, but its native maximum, I can analyze the photo visually. I'm just gonna cast my eye over the whole photo and look for areas that I like this tool in. So toggling it off, and toggling it back on is a good way to get a feel for what this tool is actually doing. And then you can ask yourself, where do I like this effect? Where do I want to include what it's doing here? And once you've got an idea of that, then you can come in and paint it in only where you want it using a mask. So I'm looking at the sky and I really like what's going on with the clouds here. It's a little bit too heavy handed at the moment, but the extra detail in the clouds from this 
to this I actually really like. I also like the fact that we've got more contrast around the trees here, also along the ridge here, and it's also more interesting on the hillside here as well. However, down at the bottom here, it's adding too much contrast for my taste into the shrubbery and trees that were much closer to the camera, less atmospheric haze in between. So there's already more contrast here anyway, so that's being enhanced even more. And so I can now come in, grab my brush, and currently I'm on 100%. And if you come in and you just start painting pretty rashly at 100%, the fall off between where we've applied this and where it's not applied is often too aggressive. And so what I prefer to do is bring my opacity down somewhere to around a third, make my brush nice and big, and then I just click and I paint over the area I want to enhance. So there we can see the detail in the clouds brought in more in the sky. And then if there's areas I want it even more, I can click and paint there. And perhaps this ridge along the top of the hill here, I'll click once and just paint a line across there. And if I want to be more precise, I can reduce the size of the brush again and come for one more pass just along the top there. And I'm using my mouse, not my Wacom tablet, just so it's sort of more accessible to you guys who don't have Wacom tablets, but it's so much easier to paint with a pen than it is with a mouse. And I made a bit of a bodge job of that. But let's have a look at our before and our after. And you can see how we've brought that structure AI in, but only really in the center and the top half of the image. We haven't affected this bottom half whatsoever because of how we've applied our mask. We've just painted it through this center section and a little bit into the sky. To help draw our eye even more to the trees in the center of the frame here, I'm gonna use a classic vignette. And so I'm gonna bring the amount down to the right so we're darkening everything around the edge. And as you know, our eyes are drawn to the brightest part of the frame. So this is gonna help bring our eye in to this center point. But obviously this is far too aggressive at the moment. There's not a nice transition at the moment. So of course we want to bring our feathering all the way up. And we want to grab the roundness slider, have a play with that, and just check that we're happy with the actual shape of the vignette. We can grab the size slider and get a tighter vignette, or we can move it out further towards the edge of the frames. But the kind of native setting of 50 is a pretty good place for me. But what I don't want to do is be this heavy handed. So we'll just grab the amount slider, bring this back, toggle it left and right, just so we're getting a good sense of what it's actually doing for us. And then when we're happy with where we want to place it, we can just release and let's see our before and our after. Yeah, maybe it's a little heavy handed. Let's bring it back down a little more. Okay, let's go with that. Usually I really like to get my composition and my crop right in camera, but this is one of those times, as I said, because of the lens that I had on my camera, I couldn't get any tighter on this actual tree here and I couldn't actually walk in any closer because there was a, the farmer's fence here. And so this is the shot that I could get. So in this case, I am gonna rely on the composition tool. So before you start randomly cropping, you wanna ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve here? And I want a slightly more simplified image and I also want to bring attention as much as I can to the tree. Now, I don't want to be crazy and like come really tight in like this. While I like the simplicity of this frame, I'm just throwing away too many pixels that way. And so I'm going to go for a wider frame and something like this might work quite well. I'm fortunate because I'm working on a 45 megapixel camera, so potentially I can afford to throw away some pixels. However, I'd really like to get this aggressive with my cropping. And so let's just give this a little bit more breathing space and I'll talk through some of the thoughts I think about when I'm cropping my images. So for this one, I'm trying to simplify. So this little darker section of grass is here. I can absolutely live without that. So we can come up and crop that out of the image. These trees on the right absolutely distract from our lovely trees sat here in the center of the frame. And they're bringing our attention over to the right. They're making the right hand side of the frame look heavier. And so if they were cropped out, that would be a much better solution. And if we look at the bottom left here, we have a tree here and that's balanced by a tree on the bottom right. And I deliberately framed it like that when I actually shot this photo. And so I'm gonna actually leave those in as anchor points in the photo. I also want to leave a little bit of the darker area of the sky here because it's almost like these darker clouds here are actually helping to frame the image. We've got brighter clouds set in here around the trees and they're being framed by the darker ones. And if I was to come in too tight, I've effectively got rid of that frame. So I don't want to do that. I'll bring that back out. Out. So I'm happy with a crop like this. I'm happy that the trees are dead center. They're not set on a third. Um, I'm liking the fact that the third line is running through this very prominent hillside line here. The only issue I've really got here are these trees just poking out of the backside of the hill here. <laughs> poking out the backside of the hill, excuse me. You know what I mean? The trees that are set behind the hill line here. 
and so I'm going to use the clone tool to try and remove those. So let's go with this composition. We can always change it later if we like. So for example, while it's applying that, a two to one ratio might be quite nice doing something more panoramic, but I do like this layering effect of one, two, three lines of the hillside. So before we go any further, let's come down to the clone tool, select this, Luminar jumps back to our original base image and you can see what a long way we've come already. And as you guys know, the clone tool works by sampling from one area and then painting it to somewhere else. So for example, if I were to sample the trees here, I could then paint the trees somewhere else. Obviously that's not what we want to do here. So I'll click that arrow to reset it. What I want to do is actually steal from some of the hill line here and then use it to paint out these trees that exist here. And so I'm gonna click here once, come over and I want to line up the hillside so that it matches, and then I can just start painting these trees out. It's as easy as that. And because I'm looking at doing a more sort of artistic interpretation, I'm not worried about the fact that I've changed reality by taking those trees out. You know, that really doesn't concern me on this particular photo. But I may want to clean up some other areas, so I've just pressed the Alt key or Option on a Mac so that I can resample. So I'm just stealing some of the grass from here, painting it over that little line. And how far you go with your cloning, that is entirely up to you. You know, if you're after a nice clean line of grass running all the way from left to right, and then you've got this little untidy area here and that was kind of triggering you, then you might want to paint that out. So what you could do is select an area here and you know that that is the break line between the grass and the foliage and then come over this side where the break line should appear and then click once and now we can now come in and paint our grass in so we're literally stealing from this area and painting over on the right hand side and if no one saw the original I don't think they're going to notice that we've actually pushed this tree's location back in the frame from sitting inside this field, now just to sit behind this little line of grass here. And once you're happy with your cloning, you just click the toolbar here just to close it down and those cloning adjustments will be applied. Now we've jumped back to my edited version, I'm thinking that I may have just cooled this color balance off a little bit too much. And so I can jump back up to the light section, come into the temperature here and just again, have a little play around with this and set that to something a little more neutral. Now I said to myself I wasn't going to let this video get away on me, get too long and go too deep into things. And so instead of going into all the other tools I would love to go into right now, I'm just going to choose a couple of tools I think will help us here achieve what I'm after. And so the first thing that I want to do is bring a little bit more attention to the highlight on this little part of the hill here and also feel the high saturation level of the green here is just calling attention away from the actual trees a little bit. And so using the dramatic filter, as I crank this up, we're going to be able to introduce more contrast on the hill and it's also going to desaturate that hillside a little bit as well. Of course, if you don't want to desaturate your image, you can play with your saturation slider here and bring that back up to zero. Uh, however, I actually want to harness the, the fact that that is desaturating my image. And again, I'm just going to grab a mask and start to paint this effect in. So I click once and I drag across the center of my frame. And there we go, we've brightened that little ridge on the hillside here and also desaturated it in the process. One more pass, add a little bit more of that effect just so that we're highlighting the cloud around the trees here. I shan't apply any of it in the sky, I think it was just a little bit over the top. So here's our before, here's our after with that tool and if we feel like it's just a little bit too strong we can just bring that amount back down. And I said I was just going to add one more tool and right now I'm torn between being super creative, taking this in a very artistic direction and having some sun rays as if they're poking through the clouds here. I think that looked really nice. Or do I just go for a color grade? Ah, decisions. Um, let's try the sun rays and see how we get on. Um, straight away the sun position is probably pretty good. I'm looking at the shadows coming down here. The sun would actually be pretty low in the sky and poking through this way but I think that's gonna not look quite right for this photo. I think I'm gonna go for around here and the fact that we actually have a sun poking over the top of the clouds, this doesn't look very good at all at the moment. I know that, don't worry about that. We are gonna fix that up. I'm only gonna mask the rays in where I want them, so I'm just gonna ignore the sun settings, jump to sun rays and just have a little play with the actual sun ray slider here to see what I like the look of. Do I want a lot of rays or not too many? 
You might be surprised, but this is kind of the look I'm going for. Not with the sun here. The only area I'm really concerned with is where the sun beams would actually be poking out of the clouds here, where it's brighter parts of the clouds and coming towards the trees. All of this overspill over the foreground here and this area I'm not concerned about because I'm going to grab my mask again. And with a low opacity, let's go halfway, 50%, I'm just going to click and I'm going to start painting. I won't let go just yet because what I want to do is kind of reveal to you uh, where these sun rays are going to be based on this mask. So you'll get a good sense of where I'm painting this mask. I may well refine this. But there you go, now I've released that, we have a much more subtle representation of beams coming through this section of the cloud. We can strengthen those up by painting more of our mask in. And then if there's areas where you don't want the beams, such as just over the hillside here, what I can do is come in, grab the eraser tool, perhaps make my brush just a little smaller, and just come in and make sure that that effect is not spilling over onto the hillside. And while I quite like this little addition of the sun rays, I think I may have overcooked it slightly, and so I'm going to reduce the opacity of my eraser, make the brush nice and big, click once and now I'm just going to paint over the top of this and that's just going to reduce the intensity. There you go, that just drops back just a little bit. And you know I said I was going to apply just one more tool and I was done? I lied. Right, let's come in. I've got to apply a LUT. It's just such an easy way to apply a colour grade to your photo and just uh, apply more unity through the whole photo. So I'm going to do that. Let's go for something like, let's go for Genius. And if you want to see what that colour grade's doing a little bit more, crank the amount up and just get a feel for the interaction between the lookup table, in this case Genius, and the colors that already existed in our photo. And so what we can do is toggle that on and off and just kind of get a feel for what it's doing. Um, I'm not completely sure that I like this particular color grade, but I'm gonna draw the line there. I'm gonna say I'm done with this edit just for the sake of the uh, quicker video. Okay, my favorite thing to do is the before and after. Let's have a little look. Before, oh, flat, lifeless, <laughs> fall asleep and Boom, there we go. We've got something that looks much, much better, much more impactful. Print it out, put it in a frame, put it on a postcard, send it to your grandma. Happy days. All right, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this edit. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. If you want to learn anything about Luminar AI, Luminar Neo, photo editing in general, let me know what is troubling you, and I'll see if I can put a video together for you. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye for now.